Okay. Uh, welcome, guys, and this is another IELTS lesson, which is um, uh, which is um, a free service of Seika, along with all the other services that you can see. So, if you or your friends require to take the PTE tests or their IELTS exam, please feel free to recommend them or please recommend them to our classes. The PTE classes are held from eleven to one o'clock. Uh, every day from Monday to Friday, uh, that's Canberra time, and from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, every day, um, uh, the IELTS classes are held, that's Canberra time, on Thursdays and Fridays, depending on the students who are joining, uh, it will be focused on academic reading and writing, but if there are more general students, then it's going back to being GT, so um, that's about us, and Chitin, you can share your work. Do you want me to stop recording or is it okay if I keep the recording on? Depends on, I mean, it's totally up to what you're comfortable with. I have no problem. Okay. Then I'll keep it on and I'll uh, check your work, but I have to enable you, right? So I'll stop sharing my screen. I have to enable you to share it. Okay. You have recently moved to a new apartment. Write a letter to a friend in your letter. Explain why you have moved. Describe your new apartment. Invite him or her to pay a visit. This is an informal letter you're writing to a friend and your background is you have moved. So there should be a story as to how you moved, when you moved, uh, why you moved and all that. Then, dear Avinash, hope you're doing well, mate. So there should be a comma here. Mm. I'm writing this letter to inform you that I have shifted my residence from a quarry park to a smart field. You have? Though being more reasonable on the financial side, the new apartment is considerably bigger. So you're giving additional information, right? So you can put even with... What's wrong with this? Even with or along with... being more reasonable on the financial side. So use this connector, except this is for comparison. Hmm? Along with being more reasonable on the financial side, along with being, uh, you should say, well reasonable or just reasonable. With reading, uh, being reasonable on the financial side, the new apartment is considerably bigger in the carpet area. This suburb is closer to my office, so it couldn't proofread, saves time and fuel. The suburb is closer to my office, uh, thus saving time and fuel, or thus helping me save. So you're demonstrating your passive voice as well, thus helping me save time and fuel. Despite the fact that it is farther away further away, farther away from the train station. The living area is humongous. And so watching a cricket match together would be even more exciting. So despite the fact that it is further away or farther away, can you take a check at it? The difference with FU or FA, further away, further away, farther away. Again, it's with you. Yeah, but both are used, but the usage, I mean, both are right. Uh, it can be both FA or FU, but the usage, it's, it's further ahead, means to go a little more. Farther is the distance, right? So I think farther is correct. Despite the fact that it is farther away or it is uh, from the train station when compared to the previous one. So there's a comparison. Home, the living area here, is humongous, humongous spelling, is it correct? So watching a cricket match together would be even more exciting. The housewarming party is on next Friday, is on the next Friday, is the next Friday. So we get the weekend together to relax so that we can get the weekend to relax and play on the PS5. 
Oh, okay. When you come here, I will show you the gorgeous view or it's truly mesmerizing. So instead of this, you can just uh, rephrase it like this. Um, the gorgeous view of the Parramatta River. Oh my God. River from the balcony is truly mesmerizing and I dare say you will enjoy someone is coming in Jitin give me a minute I got a notification I, you will enjoy it thoroughly. I dare say you will enjoy it thoroughly. You will just complete it. Oh, my spellings are going haywire. I understand why you put it on the notepad so that you don't get your Grammarly notification, right? You don't have to write it like this, so you're demonstrating. Give my regards to your parents and hope you can make it here on time. With best regards, Jitin. So I think it's okay. So that's all is the mystic. I'll just send. Uh, there was someone who had just come in and now they're not. It's okay. Jitin, any doubts? Did you write it in notepad so that um, your Grammarly will not be activated? And I don't have Grammarly. Okay. Do you want to share it once again? I just stopped sharing it because I thought someone was entering and I. 183. How many words was it? 183, is it? It was less because you also added a few sentences there. Yeah. So explain why you have moved uh, being, so you should give a reason as to why you moved uh, from Macquarie Park to Strathfield uh, to uh, cut down on my budget or as I have decided to be budget wise or financially wise or wiser in the economic terms. Something like this. Um, along with the, along with it being reasonable on the financial side, the new apartment is considerably bigger in the carpet area. The suburb is closer to my office, uh, thus helping me save um, time and fuel. Despite the fact that it is farther away from the um, train station when compared to my previous home, the living area here is humongous. So watching a cricket match together would be even more exciting. House Marling party is on the next Friday, so we can get the weekend together to relax and play on the PS5. The gorgeous view of the Parramatta River from the balcony is truly mesmerizing. And I dare say that you will enjoy it thoroughly when you come here, when you, or when you come here. There's no need of this. Give my regards to your parents and hope you can make it here on time. So task achievement, uh, so give your regards to your parents is even, that's okay. So give my best to your parents is also okay. So you can use a phrase like this. You 
I mean, this is completely fine. I'm just giving you an alternator in case. Then with best regards, Jitin. Actually, this is a good one, except for this paragraph, which you could have just reworded it a little more. And this, so you're at a band between six and 6.5. You're there at 6.5. You just need to reword things and show your um, different voices, different tenses and all that. Chitin? This, uh, uh, sorry, this is the only thing uh, that uh, I find I'm missing in the letter. Uh, I do not have much idioms included. Okay, just give me one minute. Uh, okay, idioms included. Uh, can you, I'll, I'll, you know, I always promise, but I forget. Can you please send me an email today in case I don't uh, remember, can you send me an email? I'll send off uh, a copy. I'll need to pick it from somewhere, but I'll send you this. Just send me a small reminder so that I'll send it over to you uh, by today. Uh, one more thing is just for you to understand phrases. This I had to show yesterday, but there was a lack of time. So this is for both of you, okay, even though I'm talking, it's, um, where is this? Okay, this is for your letter writing, this vocabulary thing. Did I send you this? Did I show you this yesterday? This one? So the greeting, so don't use contractions, okay. So when you're making a request, suppose you're, did I share this yesterday? Because if I did, I don't want to. No, I so, not. So if you can, if you're asking for information, if you're requesting something, you can say, please, can you do this for me? Or if you're telling, can you move my starting date to another day or something like that, please, can you? I'd be really grateful if you could. I was wondering if you would give me information. Would you mind uh, giving me information on this? So while you're making a request, right? Those are the types of, letters that you will have. You can always use these phrases. So if you're apologizing, I'm very sorry about uh, this. I'm really sorry. I'd like to apologize for my actions the other day. I would like to apologize for my misbehavior. I'd like to apologize for my uh, attitude or something like that. You could use this. If you're writing a letter of explanation, I'm just writing to let you know. I'm writing to tell you. I thought you'd like to know. I'm writing to inform. Uh, So we this struggle. Is how, sorry. Yeah, go on, Jitin. Sorry to interrupt. No sorry problem. To interrupt. No problem. Uh, this is this is how we begin the letter, the starting sentence. No. Or we can just put you it can there. use it anywhere. So you'll have three bullet points, right? For ex so anywhere that you want to explain yourself or you are requesting something, you can always use this. So if you have three bullet points, like yesterday we had a letter and in one bullet point, he was asking about uh, the job description, right? So I think the third bullet point was asking about a job description or about the um, responsibilities involved in the work. You would also say, you could write, um, I would, um, I was wondering if you could please give me more information or if you could brief me up or if you could provide details on the job scope, on the job description, on my responsibilities and things like that. Okay, so if you're accepting an invitation, I'm writing, I'm um, uh, making an invitation, I'm having a party and would you like to come? Do you fancy coming to, would you like to? So, so to accept or decline, I'd love to come, but count me in, I'm sorry, but I can't make it. Even if you're declining, I'd love to come, but, and then you could go on. Uh, letter to make an arrangement, are you free? And these are the other, for your formal letters, I'm writing to inform you, just wanted to let you know, this is for your semi-formal. Then thanking you, thanks so much, can't thank you enough, um, grateful for so and so and all that. Hello everybody. Oh, hello. Crystal is in, is that Crystal? 
Okay, then you're not expecting. Uh, so I'll just, I think this will help you. So I'll just put this on chat so that you guys can use it. Okay. So those phrases can be used for your letter um, if you're struggling. Okay, I've attached it on chat. I think I've put it twice or thrice anyway. I'll stop sharing and we'll go on to task two. No problem. So let me, I always get nervous when I'm teaching writing, you know, like as if I'm going to write, but I always get nervous. Even now after years of, after years after IELTS. Okay, so your writing task two is exactly the same for both GT and academic test takers. And these are the common kinds of essay that you will come across advantages, disadvantages, problems and solutions, opinion kind of an essay, discussion based causes and effects. Today we're going to look at an opinion based essay. This opinion based and these advantage, disadvantage is almost the same kind, even discussion, you approach it in the same way. So when you're dealing with an opinion based essay, you're also uh, along with it, dealing with advantage, disadvantage, problem and solution, causes and effects kind of an essay, okay? So your introduction is very, very important. So your first job is to state your stance or your point of view right in the introduction. Because if you look at the band descriptors, well, we'll start with band descriptors then. Okay, your band descriptor is very important before you start attempting writing. It's important that you go through it because it tells you what is required of you and then you know what to give the examiner because he's looking at these things from your essay. So there are four factors or four uh, factors for which you're being marked. The first one is called task response. So task response is if you're addressing all parts of the essay. So if they're asking you to give your own opinion or explain um, the advantages and disadvantages of this, or what is your opinion, discuss about this. So whatever it is that they are asking, if you can address all parts of the task or you address all the ideas in your topic, you achieve your task response. So for you to get band seven and above, see that you address all the bullet points, then present a clear position. So you have to clearly make your stance clear, whether it's a you know, for or against kind of an essay, or if it's your opinion based essay, you make your stance or your point of view right there in the uh, introduction very clear, because that's what is expected of you. And then thirdly, you have to present, extend and support the main idea. So every body paragraph or every paragraph should have a main idea, and then you should support that main idea. So every paragraph should have a main idea. There should be a sentence that supports it. And then there should be an example and a sentence that supports the example. So that should be there. And then every paragraph should contain one main idea and it should revolve around it. Okay, before I forget, there's one more thing that I want to uh, send you guys. Please give me a minute. Uh, so this is a PowerPoint for you to develop your paragraph. So it tells you about how, what different paragraphs are and all that. Okay, so let me know if you've not received it, then I'll email it to you in case you've not able to get it. And then for your second, so that's how it is. Every paragraph should revolve around one central idea. But sometimes what happens is, if you have a lot of ideas to present, you can put in two ideas in a paragraph. While if you're looking only at band seven, I suggest that keep it simple talk about one idea and then uh, form your paragraph around one idea, okay? The second uh, factor you're marked for is your coherence and cohesion. Coherence is how clear you are in expressing your thoughts. So your thoughts has to be organized uh, well and each paragraph, paragraphing is very important to get your coherence points as well. Cohesion is to add linking devices or cohesive devices 
uh, every sentence should be linked to the sentence prior to it, every sentence. So see that you use discourse markers uh, efficiently. I know I'm going a bit faster, but I want to know if you guys can follow me. Can you guys follow me? Yes. Okay, and uh, Anmol, welcome. And Crystal, are you able to follow me? Okay, and Anmol, uh, are you able to follow me? Anmol? Okay, so at any, any point of time throughout the lesson, if you're not able to understand me, want me to repeat, have something to add in, please feel free, treat this as an informal uh, session, okay? And the third factor that you're being marked for is your lexical resource, which is very important. Lexical resource is your vocabulary, your flair of writing. So it means uh, chunks of words. Uh, so for you to get your lexical seven band and above, you have to use a, a, a range of vocabulary, which is uh, related to your topic, use different forms of words, use a lot of nominize, nominate, nomina, oh, I always forget this term, use a noun form or the nominal form of the word. Okay, so try and use the noun form of words. It's very important. So uh, all that is important. Um, and then you can produce occasional errors in wordings or in spellings, but your nominal form of words are quite important uh, when you're adding. So use lexicals or vocabulary that is less frequent. Use the noun form of words. Are you guys able to understand me? Yes, yes, we are following. Okay, so uh, you know what I mean by nominal form, right? So if you say, I want to declare or the government must declare, you say, the, there should be a declaration by the government. You see the nominal form that is helping you to construct the sentence in a passive voice. Are you able to follow me? Were you there, Jitin, when we did the exercise to convert verbs and nouns and all that? Uh, yes, I was not there. You were not there. No, no. Okay. All right. So you have to try and use the nominal. Nominal means name, means noun. So try and use the noun form of word. So instead of telling the government has to take an action, you would say action has to be taken by the government. So you use the nominal form of words just so that you use a passive voice frequently. Then use less common, less commonly used vocabulary. And lastly, uh, there's another factor which is called your GRA, which is grammar range and accuracy. That's quite important too. So for you to achieve your grammar range and accuracy, always remember, uh, use your tenses properly, wisely, and then see in what tense the question is asked to you. What tense are they asking today, nowadays, recently? So always your IELTS essay is re related to people. It's always a people related kind of an essay. So uh, you have to display your tenses and display simple complex and compound sentences that we just saw yesterday. And uh, yeah, that's all. So let's move on. As we move on, if there's anything relevant that pops up, I'll uh, let you. So your introductions and your conclusions are quite important when you're writing. The reason being your introduction is the first thing that your examiner sees, and that is where your band is fixed. So the examiner, he reads your introduction and he fixes a band. He might fix you at 6.5 or six or seven, and then your aim is to keep moving higher from there. So you write, you give the examiner what he expects of you. That's the reason why you go through your public band descriptors. You give the examiner what he expects of you. So you make sure that you reach a higher band. So if, if you are marked at eight for band uh, in, the, in the introduction, you can only move higher or lower from there. So even if you move a little bit lower, you'll still end up at 7.5. So always aim at giving an excellent introduction because that's going to fix your band score and it's going to move um, up or below uh, based on that, okay? 
and your conclusion has to be excellent. So excellent introduction, excellent conclusion helps you to fix at that particular band score, okay, so that it doesn't go less. Suppose your introduction was good, your paragraphing was all right, you had to go down a bit, few bands. If your conclusion is excellent, you will still be at a higher band, okay? So make sure that your introduction is to the point, whatever is needed of you in an introduction, give it to them. Excellent introduction and an excellent conclusion as your very, uh, is, your, is, is quite crucial for you to achieve your desired band. So far, are we all good? All good, all good. Okay, we'll move on. So uh, we have done this once or twice, but I'm just doing this because Carlos and uh, Crystal are quite new. So your discourse markers are important. They're used for your formal writing and an informal writing. Uh, so you have to learn your discourse markers, topic sentences. Okay, let's go and look at our introduction. So this is important for your introduction and conclusion. Please take a picture of this. So your introduction and conclusion should contain uh, phrases, useful phrases, a bit of idiomatic or pictorial language. It must have all the three forms of verbs, the base form, the V1, V2, V3, and ING form of verbs. Then see that you speak in the present perfect tense, such as have, V3 and past perfect. So active passive voices, even if you don't worry about these two, see that you have all the three forms of verb, okay? And your uh, tenses are clear. So these are a few discourse markers that you can use for your conclusion, although nonetheless. So in some, these are a few discourse markers you can begin with. You can begin your, uh, your sentence with this, ensuring that you are showing uh, uh, the passive voice, ensuring that you're showing a complex sentence. So begin your sentence with the discourse marker often so that you're showing that you, you, are, you can write in a complex sentence as well, okay? And for your conclusion, use these discourse markers in summary, to sum up, in conclusion, to conclude, use these discourse markers for your uh, conclusion. So this was the exercise that we did. Jitin, were you there when we did this last time? Unfortunately, I was not there. Okay, so this is just for you to understand the forms of verbs. Okay, can you try guys and do this? And we'll see uh, if you can put uh, a nominal, um, if you can practice your, to, to make a word into a noun, noun form of a word. Okay, can you just take about a little time just to do this? Can I attempt the first one? Yes, what's the first one? Taking out a loan to fund a master's degree is a really good investment. It's a really good investment. So invest is your verb to invest into something and investment is the noun. Well done. What about the next one? My arts teacher in high school was absolutely dash. Inspirational. Inspired. Inspiring. Ins Inspirational, inspiring. Okay, both are correct. So there, that word inspirational and inspiring, they're acting as an adjective or they're acting as adjectives. My arts teacher in high school was absolutely inspirational, was absolutely inspiring. So you're giving more information about the arts teacher here, it's acting as an adjective. What about the next sentence? Some people wouldn't like to be a teacher because they think teaching is really dash. Repetitive. That's the right answer. So instead of telling 
in teaching, people tend to repeat things over and over. So many people don't like to be, you say teaching is quite repeat, repetitive. Okay, so you use the noun form of the verb. Or here it becomes an adjective as well. It's talking more about the word teaching. Then although many TV programs are not suitable for the classroom, some dash programs such as documentaries are good aids to learning. Anmolan, yeah, good. It could be educational. Well done, Carlos. So the answer is educational programs. So here educational is also acting as an adjective. A really good teacher can dash his or her students and make them excited about the subject. Crystal? Uh, a really good, okay, let them. Crystal, Anmol. Okay, Jitan. A really good teacher can dash. A really good teacher can enthuse. Well done. Students. Well done. So enthuse is the answer. Then a school shouldn't be so enthuse there is behaving as a verb, can make somebody enthusiastic, okay? So that is a good job, well done. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? Then schools shouldn't just be about studying and learning. It's also important for pupils to have a wide range of extra dash activities, such as sports and music. Probably it is extra curricular. Well done. So extracurricular. So that behaves as an adjective as well. What kind of activities? Extracurricular, something which is adding to the curriculum. So it's extra to the curricular. Then the last one. A good teacher knows when to give his or her students lots of dash. Oh, rush. Lots of? Lots of. Courage, Co courage? No, that's encouragement. Courage is bravery, uh, whereas to encourage is to make, to inspire someone or to make someone brave. So a uh, good teacher knows when to give his or her students lots of encouragement. So you see now uh, that's how you change the word forms. You either add a suffix or you add a prefix and you change the word forms. Okay, while uh, you are there, I'll just stop sharing this. Someone has messaged. Yes, so I'll just stop sharing this. I'll just pull out one more thing from the internet. Don't go anywhere. Give me a minute. So I usually use this for my general English students, but it's important for all of us. Um, so how to add a suffix and change the form of a verb uh, or a word? Okay, so Okay. Okay. So guys, uh, can you see my um, screen? I just lifted it off the internet. This one is called 7ESL. No, this was cambridge.org. It's quite a, a good website for if you're, if you're looking to improve your English. So if you look at a verb, at a word, and if you add these suffixes, suffixes means the fixes or um, the small fixes that you put after and prefixes if you fix it before. So to this word, forget, use, state, govern. So all these behave as verbs. But if you put any of these suffixes, they become noun. So the suffix F-U-L, M-A-N-T, I-O-N becomes a noun. So if you, wrote, if you put, so pay attention to the spelling rules here. So I won't take time for that. Um, I'm just bringing to you the suffix, that's all. I'm not going anywhere else. So if you add the suffix A-G-E, 
A L A N C E E N C E. You see, you make a word into a noun. Okay. To make a word into an adjective, you add suffixes in this form: A B L E A L E N. So, a forgetful man, a passive listener. So, you add all these suffixes to make this word into an adjective. To to make a word into a verb, you add these suffixes. I'll just share the link on the chat. So this will help you to make your sentences into passive voices. Okay. Trying to bring things that I think are useful for you um, to make your sentences um, good. All right, we'll start off with introduction. Okay, your introduction should always have these things. So your introduction will should start with paraphrasing or rewriting the topic sentence in your own words. For example, if you have a topic sentence like this, or maybe I'll take a different topic sentence. If you have a topic sentence like, okay, like this. The number of people who are overweight or obese is far higher than in the previous generations. What are the reasons for this and how can the problems be tackled? So the first thing that your introduction should contain is you should have a paraphrasing of this topic. So paraphrasing is adding your own words or writing the topic sentence in your own words. And then after you paraphrase it, the second thing that your introduction should contain is you should have an extra sentence to support the first thing. So you paraphrase the topic sentence, add an extra sentence to support the paraphrased statement, and then you tell your point of view or you explain your stance. I completely agree. I completely disagree. What are the advantages and disadvantages? You would say the advantages of this outweighs the disadvantages or something or the I strongly believe that the advantages outweighs the disadvantages of this. So you're always stating your stance or your point of view right there in the introduction. And then you give your reader the plan uh, about what you're going to say. I completely agree, I completely disagree, or this essay will discuss the advantages and disadvantages. This essay will demonstrate both sides of the coin or something like that, if it's an advantage, disadvantage kind of an essay. So your introduction should be rewriting the topic sentence in your own words, paraphrasing it, adding an extra sentence to just support the first one, then you should focus about on the question in your own words, you should state your point of view, and then, well, it's an uh, and then give the reader your plan. So give me a minute while I take you here. Uh, Okay, now if you look at this paragraph, if you look at this um, um, to topic, how can you paraphrase it? The number of people who are overweight or obese, maybe I should drag up my Word document and uh, write it there. Give me a minute while I copy this. Now, can you see my Word document? 
So I hope you can see it. Now, if you look at the first thing that your introduction should start with, you should rewrite this topic sentence in your own words. How to rewrite it? What are, our, what are the ways to paraphrase your topic sentence? How can you paraphrase it? So you say, what are your keywords? You take, out, take down your keywords, number of people. So try and read your topic sentence once or twice, number of people who are overweight or obese, number of people. Then your keyword is overweight and obese. Then far higher than in the previous generation. So higher than previous generations. Oh, okay. Uh, Jitin? Um, I think in the previous class I had told you that generations is a wrong usage. I don't know if you remember, um, but it turns out that we can use generations. Sorry. What are the reasons for this and how can the problems be tackled? So problem be tackled. So all these are our keywords. So can you think of synonyms? Number of people can be written as majority of people, uh, a huge portion of the population, or a huge portion of today's demographic, or urban population, rural population, Okay, all that. So you would paraphrase it like this. Now, overweight or obese, uh, you could say suffering from weight uh, issues, or suffering from consequences of day city. Okay, then higher than previous generations. How could you write a paraphrase it? Or what chunk of words can you use to paraphrase this keyword? Higher rate than our uh, fathers or, or higher rate than our predecessors. Okay, all these problems can be tackled. How to solve the issue of, okay, find a solution for obesity or something like this. So you look at all your keywords and you try to find your synonym. This is the, has to be done in your mind. I'm just writing it down so that you guys can see it. Okay. So then, what you do, you try to find a right. Try to paraphrase this. So read this again. The number of people who are overweight or obese is far higher than the previous generations. What are the reasons for this, and how can the problems be tackled? So this is your task achievement. Reasons and how the problems can be tackled. So this is a problem solution kind of an essay, right? So you would say. Um, Majority of uh, today's population suffers from the consequences or suffers from obesity and its consequences. When compared to um, their uh, predecessors or come in compared to our predecessors. Okay, so you can say, take this off. Majority of today's population when compared to our predecessors suffer from obesity and consequences and you paraphrase it. Am I being clear to you? Yeah. 
Yes, this is true. So I know this, I took so much time only because I was explaining, but this has to be done in your mind. Okay. That's okay, Carlos. So this is how you uh, paraphrase it. This is one way to paraphrase it. Then another way to paraphrase it is to change the order, which I don't recommend at all, but you can change the order. So change the order means there are two points here. If you can't think of any words, number of people who are overweight or obese. Okay, and then far higher than in previous generations. So what do you do? You change the order. You say when compared to the leaner or when compared to our leaner previous generations, today's population suffers from being overweight or obese. This is also one way if you're really um, at a loss for words. Any doubts? You're all very quiet. Very, very, very quiet. Is everything okay? This is something new. We are uh, relaxing our mouth muscles and giving more energy to the brain. So that's right. why we are quiet. Okay, so, um, okay. So this is one way that you guys should paraphrase it. I had done this, I think, previously. So this is one, this is your first job, that you look at your keywords and you paraphrase your uh, topic. Then second thing that you should do, you rewrote the topic sentence, then you add an extra sentence to support the first one. How can you support this? Add a supporting statement. Majority of today's population when compared to our predecessors suffer from uh, obesity and its consequences. Uh, though, or we can say uh, a supporting statement like this causes a lot of um, health um, and or this takes a toll on a person's mental and physical health, okay? Now, what you do is you're giving a cue to the examiner, what you're going to say. So you'll tell, though some may argue that um, weight, though some may argue that weight of a person is irrelevant, I firmly believe or I completely believe or I am of the opinion that one should strive to stay or strive to um, be in within the healthy BMI range. Okay, then you say this essay will, so you gave your opinion here, uh, if it is an opinion based essay, but this is a problem solution based essay. So some may argue, I'm of the opinion that, or the, so if it's an opinion based essay, state your opinion, you would say, I'm of the opinion and this essay will discuss both side, both the advantages and disadvantages of um, being cautious 
um, about wait or this is a problem solution kind of an essay so you'll give here uh, though some may argue that the pace of, place uh, weight of a person is irrelevant um, there are numerous examples that refute this belief and then this essay will um, shed light on on the problems or on the what can be on the risks caused by weight gain or by excess weight gain and the solutions to overcome um, to overcome this problem is this clear this is how your essay should your introduction should be first thing is paraphrasing so what are the ways to paraphrase look at all your keywords and or your chunk of keywords try to think how am i going to paraphrase it then second thing is you add an extra uh, write it add an extra sentence to support the first sentence or your paraphrased sentence focus on the question what kind of it is what kind of essay is it problem solution causes effects if it's an opinion based you tell i completely agree completely disagree and then this essay will shed light on this is this clear guys any doubts on this i don't know uh crystal carlos okay if there's anything that you want me to explain again i am more than happy okay anything that you want me to explain further didn't understand i'm more than happy only need to ask okay can you give us an example i mean uh, we want to yeah, give it a try yeah yeah that's that's what you're going to do now so it's your turn now i was just selecting the slide for that so this is the essay for today oh my god where is it okay today we are going to do a there's a need for this problem solution kind of an essay or a discussion you can call it it's not too clear okay can you see my slide or no yes i can okay this is your topic for today i want you guys to paraphrase it you took a picture of the structure right or you want me to display the structure once again display of the, once again please of the introduction okay okay this is the structure of the introduction let me post it here i mean paste it here okay you can see my slide right okay so this is your topic for today and i want you guys to write an in uh, an introduction to this so introduction should contain all of these shall i give you 5 minutes to do this work so 5 minutes should be enough okay i want to see your plan okay i don't care if it's on paper or on the computer but i want to see you do this i want to see your work okay i've timed you for 5 minutes and i'm stopping the recording now uh can i share my screen i'll stop sharing yeah please share your screen uh, it's okay 
Did I share the wrong document? Hmm. In contemporary times, this is what is being shared, right? Yeah. In contemporary times, in many places around the globe, not many adults want to pursue the profession of teaching teenage children. The next generation is not like the. It is the the backbone. of every country or a country if they are not properly educated the nation will soon meet its demise well done this essay will shed more light on the reasons of this change and will also try to identify some possible solutions good job well done okay oh, close it what happened and uh, you were on the uh, button to close the notepad okay okay i'm sorry um <laughs> carlos have you written carlos carlos have you written yes i'm here sorry i'm i'm finishing because i was a little bit busy but i'll try to finish okay is possible give me just two minutes Please. Okay, no problem. Take your time. And Crystal, have you written anything? Crystal, Crystal girl, are you at work? Okay. Let's move on. So, Carlos, let me know when you're ready, okay? So, shall I wait or shall I continue? Have you written the your introduction to this? Can you share that with us, please? Okay. So here's my introduction. Like this. Um. No, for this I have not written. Okay. So that was for your introduction exercise. I wanted you to write an essay. I mean, of this question. Someone has written in the chat. Okay, she's telling that she's working, but she can listen. Okay, no problem. So this is uh, an example of my essay, but I can write it for this now. So maybe I can write it now as we wait for Carlos. So this one would be like this. In my word document. Okay, so this would be like this. So if this is the topic sentence, these days in many countries, fewer and fewer people want to become teachers, particularly in secondary schools. What are the reasons for this, and how could the problem be solved? This is problem solution kind of an essay. So I look at all my keywords. In these days, many countries, fewer and fewer people want to become teachers, particularly in secondary schools. So I would say, teaching. has always been considered as a noble vocation but of late there is a trend of people choosing or people um there is a trend but of late
being a teacher is not or of late people or of late people seldom want to be a teacher especially in um, especially for young girl children so this poses or this disinterest towards teaching poses a huge risk towards um, the towards a huge risk towards providing quality foundational education to children this essay will shed light on the risks or on the cons of the situation and also provide measures to help that might help solve it like this. So teaching and teaching is quite repeated, right? So and Towards this profession or something like that? Towards being profession. Professional educator process of this interest being an educator. Was this a huge risk towards providing quality foundational education? Okay, we could do something like this. Carlos, are you done? Yeah, mine is done. Do you want to share your screen? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let me share where is it? Yeah. Yeah, this is mine. Okay, these days, okay, the controversial issue about being a high school teacher. Um, so many numbers of people are finding this profession is tedious and unmotivated. It could be because the young community are paying mean and also the payment is low and insufficient reward for this work. In this essay, we will discuss some points of why this is happening and the future positive arguments that can be solved due to this trouble. So this is okay, but there are a few issues in your sentence structure. Mm -hmm. So you can say the controversial issue 
about being a high school professor. Um, what are you meaning here? The controversial issue about being an I high school professor is getting less and less. In uh, so yeah, I think I forget. I forgot to put the last sentence to close it. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Then many numbers of people are finding this. So in many number, you won't put numbers or mm -hmm. a large number of people. So you could put a large number of people are finding this profession uh, tedious and unmotivated. Maybe you meant and here. It mm -hmm. could be because young community uh, can be mean. So instead of are mean, we use hedging. So you don't just tell that. It is because the young community can be mean or a young community sometimes uh, can be blunt or something like that. And also the payment is low and insufficient to reward this work. This essay will discuss some, discuss some point of why this is happening and the future positive arguments that can help solve this problem or the future positive actions that can help solve this problem. Okay. All right, I'm just um, closing your sharing. Okay, now we'll go look at um, any doubts, Jitin. Uh, the way we used to rephrase the sentence here for uh, the introduction. Yeah. Uh, can we not use the same way to change our, to make our sentences better for task one? Of course, it will take more time, but then what you're telling us is. yeah we can you're telling us the the planning you mean taking the keywords and taking synonyms can we do can, why can't we do mm -hmm. that for task one is what you're asking right mm -hmm. yeah you mm -hmm. can do that i you can do that but we don't usually have that much time yeah we only have 20 minutes and it's mm -hmm. a big problem you know like many students um but it won't take that much time this is only because you're uh, learning and we are doing it together but once you keep doing it in your head, the thing is always do it in your head. Um, just off the record, um, there is something called, I don't know, if I'm deviating from the topic, but just, okay. I'll take the other slide now.
Oh, can I share my screen? Yes, please? yes, please. So, am I recording it or? Yes, yes, it is being recorded. Okay. You had shared the structure. I wrote the structure somewhere, but then, ah, it's over here. Hmm. So, the current generation to become entrepreneurs in the field rather than following the steps of their forefathers, seeking employment. Though many people may argue that this, um, this yeah, may be beneficial yeah. for the economy as it creates more jobs. This essay will shed, shed lights on the pros and cons of the issue. Simple, uh, but it's error free, except for this one. Okay, well done on this. So it's somehow registered, right? Uh, the making an uh, introduction has registered now, right? Have I closed your screen? Mm, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, should I share it again? No. But it is quite error free. Can you have I deleted everything that you've written or? No, no, no. Okay. That's all I was worried about. Now we look at a building a good body paragraph. So first of all, for your body paragraph, you should make the grid. Okay. Can you see the First of all, in your body paragraph, you should divide your page into four, write the pros and cons of it. So this is how it's going to look like. You have already done this, I think, previously, I don't know. But we've done this in our letters. So this is how your task two grid is gonna look like. So if you're writing in, on one hand, you're writing business, own business, what is good about it? And you put two points. This is for your body para and then bad about it or in just below it you'll write what is bad about a business and you'll put one or two points and then the second half of the grid or on the top right corner you'll write being employed or being an employee what is good about it and you'll write at least two points and then just below that what is bad about being employed or working for another person and you'll write two points about it. So you make your plan first. Is this clear? Have you, uh, were you there when we did this? Or uh, letter, yes. No, this is a essay. Uh, for essay, I was not there, but for the letter. Yeah. Sure I was there. yeah, so for essay as well, you make a grid, you divide your page into four, you make a plan. This is your plan for your topic. So your essay must have an intro, at least two body paragraphs, and then a conclusion. So now we know a structure for an intro. It's almost there in our head. Okay, what should my introduction contain and how to do it? Now we're going to see how to structure or how to write our body paragraph. For us to write a good body paragraph, we need this grid. So we write positives and negatives, right? So we write the positives of, there are two, two topics, two ideas. So own business, what is good about it? And you'll structure it and write two points. And what is bad about having an own business? And you'll put two points. And on your top right, on your top right over here, you'll put the other idea, which is uh, being an employee or being employed. What is good about it? Write two points. And then what is bad about it? And you write two points. Is this clear? That's how you make a plan for your body paragraph. Any doubts? At home, when we are practicing, we have a sheet of paper. We can make that call. Even even okay. your test, you'll have a uh, you'll have paper. Oh, they'll give us a rough sheet. Yeah, yeah, and they'll so. give you pencil as well. Um, okay. Any other doubts? All good with this planning, right? Okay. So you can always begin your body paragraph with this because this is an opinion-based essay, right? Advantage, disadvantage, or any anything, you can always begin with this, okay? Now, 
your body paragraph should contain something called as a topic sentence so it should contain one center topic one central idea around which that that paragraph is centered that's called topic sentence so for you to write clear topic sentence you need to introduce your ideas clearly that's what your job is so you're first writing your topic sentence you can you introduce it using any of these one of the major advantages one of the best things on the one hand on the other hand while uh, on one side or um, if one side of the coin shows this or something like that be careful use hedging you were here or you were there when we were discussing hedging i guess were you there yes yes, yes. okay so you remember hedging i won't go into that so how should Can you go to the previous slide please which one this uh, one this one where you were discussing uh, how to begin the body paragraph okay this one yep just give me one moment Thank you. You have an elder sister or younger sister? I have an elder, uh, both in fact, an elder brother and an elder sister. Uh -huh. Okay. So your essay. Why, should... No, when you said thank you, um, I thought you might have a sister and you might be speaking like this. Okay, so this should be your format of an essay, standard format. Of an essay should be like this. It should start with an introduction. It should have a body para one. It should have a body para two and a conclusion. So this should be the format of your essay. Now, wait, please. Give me a moment. Okay, for you to build your paragraph. This should be there in your uh, paragraph. This is the formula for your paragraph building, body paragraph building. So you should introduce your topic sentence, write your topic sentence, introduce it. So this is the main idea of the paragraph. This is going to be around which your paragraph will revolve. So main idea of the paragraph. And then you can either choose to give a supporting statement or not, doesn't matter, but you should always give an example, give an example. then give a supporting statement or give an elaborate elaboration of that example. Okay, this should be there in your body para. Can you see the first three points that should be there in your body para? You introduce your topic sentence, give an example and support that examples with an example with another sentence. Please wait for me. So now I want you to pay attention Okay, so you know that your body paragraph should contain those three things, a topic sentence, something to support the topic sentence that's optional if you have, if you can, or you just put an example to support your topic sentence and an elaboration on that example. Now to build it, you should develop a fully composed argument. Suppose you have this as your uh, topic. Some people believe that places such as libraries and theaters should have a minimum age restriction. Others think that children, however young, should be allowed in public places. What is your opinion? So in your introduction, you know that you have to paraphrase and all that. No, body paragraph one, you might be writing for the topic. You might tell, okay, I believe that children should be allowed, blah, 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 blah. Now, if you're writing body para two, okay, you ask yourself the question, why children is not, why children shouldn't be allowed? Why? Uh, may you'll come across the answer, maybe because they are noisy, children can be noisy, can disturb other people who are uh, trying to um, enjoy, trying to grasp things in the libraries and theaters. So you use your hedging word, instead of telling young children can be noisy or are noisy, you say some young children can be noisy. So you write a discourse marker telling that after you write your first body, you start with a discourse marker. However, 
So in the first body para, you might have told children are good, they should be allowed and all that. Now, if you're writing your second, just, just to start with, you'll start with. However, some young children can be noisy. And uh, you, this is your stance or this is your topic sentence. However, some children can be noisy or some young children can be noisy. Now you give an example to support this stance. You say, for example, a young child may start to cry loudly just as the climax of the play is reached, ruining the atmosphere at the moment and affecting the audience's chance to fully engage with it. So you give a topic sentence and then you give an example to support your st stance. So you say, for example, a young child, right? So you act as if the rubric, right? As if this one, this rubric is not seen by the uh, examiner. So you have to spoon feed the examiner. You have to tell him every single thing about what you're thinking. Always pretend that he has not seen this question. So you're just writing an essay where he does not know your the question. So you're just sharing your point of view. So you give a complete idea, you see. However, some young children can be noisy. And then you give an example statement, okay? And then to see, like I told you, between the topic and the example, there can be a bridge just to connect these two. So you could be uh, telling, so first to arrive at this, you ask the question, why children shouldn't be allowed? Then you came to the answer, okay, children can be noisy. And then you have an example that this. Now to just connect these two, you can write a sentence or an elaboration like this. What do I mean by children can be noisy? Like this. They're not aware of the disturbance that they may be causing. However, some children can be noisy as they were, they're not aware of the disturbance they may, causing, they may be causing to those who are using the facility to study or appreciate a performance. Okay, And then you give an example by telling that, however, young children can be uh, noisy. Uh, this, you don't worry about this. It's not important for you. That's for band eight or band nine. Don't worry about that. Uh, did you understand your body paragraph? What I mean by it? And then, oh, so when is entering. Okay. So you don't have to back up this connecting statement with an example, but you have to write an elaboration for this example, which says, this illustrates why young children should be prevented from yet entering public spaces where noise levels are sometimes required. So in short, let me put pull up my Word document. I'll type it in so that it becomes more clear to you. So for your body para one, you should have a topic sentence. So you always ask the question, why then you'll come across a topic sentence then you have an example statement to support it support why now to connect the example and topic you will have a linking statement. So here you ask the question, what do I actually mean by this? Okay, sometimes what happens is some people give an example after this as well or for this as well but don't worry about that. Now what you do is you elaborate about the example. So this is step one, this is step two, this is step two, this is step three and Oh no, I'm intentionally doing that. And this is your step four, clear? This is for your body paragraph. Any doubt? 
Just give me one minute. I'm copying processing this. it. Okay. Do you have any example of a body paragraph written? Yeah, I'll show you that. Yeah. Uh, so one example is that one. You can take a picture of that or you know what? Give me a minute. Okay. Doesn't mean you should stop coming to class, okay? So. Did you get it? What is there in this document? It's the PowerPoint that I'm oh, sharing. This one. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you should stop coming to class. Uh, no, no. Okay. Uh, don't think I'm such a diligent student that I will be reading the whole hundred slides of the presentation. Yeah, it's all my hard work, you know. But I keep adding to it for every lesson. Like mm -hmm. I'd had only eighty something today. For today, I added twenty more keeps increasing. I, I am more like a notes taking person, whatever you are uh, discussing, I keep typing that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Even I'm like that. Okay. So this is one example of your body paragraph. For example, it's just the question that we just did. For this one, how do you write a body paragraph? So I want you to only pay attention to this body paragraph. There are several benefits of setting up uh, your own business. For me, the main one is you can have the room to be creative. Instead of having to follow your employer's decision, you can reach the goals from the business yourself, which means you will feel more in control. This generally results in uh, people feeling happier in their jobs. Oh my God, my paragraphing has been wrong. I'm just setting it right. Okay. So not only that, you can keep the profits if the company is successful. If all goes well, you will earn far more than if you work for someone else. For instance, if you set up your own graphic design company and you build a good reputation, you will be able to make a substantial income. You will therefore be more motivated to work hard in order to make a success of your company. So you write your body paragraph like this. So you tell there are several benefits to setting up your own business. For me, the main one is you have the room to be creative. And then instead of having to follow you, you can make your own decision. This generally results in making people make people feeling happier in their job. So in your plan, right, where you make a grid, you remember the one that I showed you, the good and bad, this grid. Here you write the good of you. Can you see it clearly or? I can see it, I can see it. Okay. So you write your good here. Okay, earn business. What's good about it? What is bad about it? Being an employee, what's good about it? What's bad about it? And you give your points here. And each of this point will make your body paragraph. Clear? Four paragraphs? No, no, not a whole paragraph. Each of those points will make about one of your body paragraph. Mm. Okay, so the reason why I'm asking you to write two is so that you have a backup in case you don't know what to write further, you'll always have a backup. Any doubts? What are you, you have a doubt? No. 
I definitely do. Okay, what Can is you it? Show the question. Can you show the question once, please? Okay, this is your question. Advantages of working for yourself or through the drawbacks. So you make a plan. What is good about it? So you say one main good thing is you can you have room to be creative. So instead of following your employer's decision, you can set the goals for the business yourself. So this is one one advantage, and you're putting it up. And you write what is bad about it, or what are the disadvantages of it. Deniable that running a business is risky. There is an economic downturn, so it's unpredictable. That's what you're telling. So this is good about running a business. This is bad about it. And then you sum it up like this. But if you follow the second half of it, which is about being employed, if this is your main um, idea, then you would say one of the major advantages, or one of the greatest advantages of being employed by someone is job security or something like that. And then you would say, um, what is um, job security and then a steady income and things like that. And for the disadvantage, you would say a person might be limited uh, by the instructions given to him alone. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. okay. now can you um, make a grid, make a plan? We only have about 13 minutes right, left, but I want to quickly see you write a body paragraph, at least one, and uh, the conclusion as well. So can you write uh, uh, the grid quickly and try and write one body paragraph using the structure? Topic sentence, connecting statement, example, and then elaborate the example. I'll, uh, while you do that, mute, mute my voice and do it. I'll talk to the new student who has just joined us. Um, hello, what's your name? Hi, ma'am. How are you doing? Hi, I'm, I'm very well. Hi, Abhishek. Yeah. So is this your first lesson? This is my first lesson, ma'am. Actually, I'm connected from my walk here. Okay. So I just wanted to see uh, like what's going on because I'm not able to concentrate at all right now. But is, is it possible to get the recording, ma'am? Because I'll be only able to attend the class for two days in a week. Oh, sure. You know what? All these lessons are posted on YouTube. So okay. You can take a look at it. I'll just send you the link. Can you give me like one minute? I'll just send you the sure. link. I'll yeah. start sharing it. I'll, I'll copy the link and I'll post it on the chat. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. So you available? Uh, you looking at academic or uh, general? I'm looking for general. Okay, what's your uh, band? What's the band that you're aiming for? I'm aiming for eight. Eight. Okay. And yes. uh, when do you want it by? Eight is it or triple seven eight? I want the best. I mean, like if it's um, eight, 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 eight is fine. Exactly. So I want I want good score, yeah. So I just have one month to go for this. Yeah, so. I suggest you please take a look at today's lesson, especially. Okay. So I don't know when yeah. they post it, but only my regular lessons on. On YouTube. And have you sent the, uh, the link for the YouTube channel? I am just sending it off to. Okay, yeah. I'm really sorry to appear at the end of the class. No problem. What you have to do to get bread on the table, you know? Yeah, that's true. But still, I was like, okay, when I have a chance, let's plug in and see what's going on. We'll get to learn at least something. Yeah. When, when, what are the days that you're free? I'm free on Monday and Friday. Monday and Friday. Yes. All right. Friday only sometimes, but Monday for sure. Monday for sure. Okay. Yes. Just and we to... do not have classes on weekends, yeah? Um, unfortunately, I don't teach on weekends. Oh, that's fine, but the recording would work for the other days. Yes, yes, it would be up. I will also share my Gmail with you in case you need me to check your essays or anything. Just yeah, sure. Probably a bit because I over promise. You. 
Sorry, what do you say? You need to prod me a little bit because sometimes I promise, but I find the time to keep up. Oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, but yeah, since you've given me, I'll try to make use of it. You know? okay. I'm very poor at writing and only writing. Yeah, I'm very poor. Right. Like the first time that I appeared, I just got 6.5 or 7, I think. So, okay. very poor in it. That's okay. When are you planning to sit for your test? Um, in the month of May, I think. Yeah. So I have three weeks at least. Okay. Right. Yeah. Three weeks. You're planning to sit for any test, is it? Three have weeks. Taken, yeah. Have you taken a mock test recently? No, I haven't. So I'll take a mock test in between. We'll prepare for it. So I'm trying to devote all of my time to this after my working hours. You know? So I reckon it should be done. Yeah. In, yeah. So let me know. Let me know and uh, uh, write an essay. I'll help you out as much as I can. Unless, sure, ma'am. Unless, unless it is a, a necessity, don't book your test unless um, you're sure that you're... Exactly, okay. yes. Because you're simply losing money, right? And you can't exactly, yeah. yeah. Sure, I'll make sure I get the desired score in the mock test first and then only I'll set in the real one. Yeah. Yes. Sure, ma'am. Right. Thank you for your advice. No problem. Thanks. Jitin? Um, did you say something? Sorry. Yeah. Have you finished? Uh, I have three points for pros, three points in cons. So would that be enough for the two body yeah. paragraphs? Yeah. So the reason why you're putting it is you're organizing your thoughts just to see which is the best and which has more ideas and what you can employ. So do you want to dictate and I'll write it? I, I did not write for the, uh, I have only written for the self-employment part. I have not written for the employment. Okay, that's okay. Can you show me, that's one is enough because in one you're talk, talking about both. Mm -hmm. just, uh, take a you're putting your mic into mm -hmm. your mouth, I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll just take a quick second and just share it on the screen. All right. I'll just pause. The, okay, it's already paused. Yeah. So, okay. Now, uh, how, how will your topic sentence begin? You will tell there are several advantages to uh, owning or there are several advantages to being self-employed. One of the main uh, advantage is um, you would say a person can um, be more creative, a person can follow his passion or uh, and then you'll put an example, you'll make your own example as to, for example, uh, for instance, uh, people uh, or for instance there are uh, living examples who have followed their dream and achieved great things who have followed who've taken a risk to follow their passions and achieved uh, great success in their arenas 
And then to connect the example and this, you would say a person who is passionate uh, about what he is doing always achieves great success. And then for instance, there has been numerous living examples among us, uh, like the, uh, the, um, the, the owner of Facebook or you could say some great scientist who forsake everything to follow his dream and counted ended up being a lot of a uh, lot successful uh, so i think being uh, ha having own business and being passionate about what you do is uh, crucial for great success or it is a, a crucial part of great success did you understand me how to structure it so you gave the top uh, is it understandable oh yes definitely so you gave the structure like that. You put the topic sentence more creative. Uh, so it gives a, a way or it paves way for great success. And then you give an example like there are numerous examples, numerous living examples among us or among us who have achieved great success as, as they follow their dream. Uh, one of the most notable is um, the owner of Facebook or somebody who forsake everything to follow his dream and achieved great success. To link these two, you would put, uh, because working passionately always uh, leads someone to achieve great success. And then you give the example. And then for the concluding statement of the body paragraph, you might say, thus proving uh, passion is a key ingredient for achieving great success. Do you want me to write it down? I the... have already written it down. Yeah, okay. And then for your second body paragraph, uh, let me see your screen. Uh, where is your screen? Oh, I can't see your screen, Jitin. Okay, thanks. So for the second body paragraph, less time for family. So you would say, but on the other side of the coin, uh, on the other hand, um, one, uh, a business owner, on the other hand, a self-employed individual finds himself having less time for his family and uh, for his family. And then you give an example, um, for instance, or you give an example like, uh, to exemplify uh, uh, thus leading to um, poor relationships or thus leading to a poor relationship between spouse and children. And then you give an example. For example, there has been numerous studies have showed that um, uh, uh, business owners or self-employed or in individuals who um, spend all of their time working. Recent study has shown that they have poor family relationships or their relationship with family is poorer. Then to link the example and the topic, you link an idea with because he would be all his time is consumed uh, because of his business, because his business takes up all of his time. So you would write it again. I'm just, I'm just a re, I mean, I'm telling it again. So you would say, um, on the other hand, or to talk about the other side of the coin, on the other hand, a self-employed individual finds himself having less lesser time for his family as the business would consume all his time. For uh, instance, or to elaborate, um, uh, numerous studies have proved that uh, self-employed business owners have um, uh, lose relationships with uh, their spouse and children and then you would say so to achieve to, as a concluding statement you would say so to achieve one's dream there is a huge sacrifice involved uh, unless one finds a balance in or one finds a balance or one finds a balance Make sense? Yes. Can you show me what you've typed? Sure. Um, so that um, those who are seeing this on YouTube might see what I've just told. Okay, so 
you've told on the other hand a self-employed individual finds himself having less time for his family as business would consume all his time thus leading to poor relationship between spouse and children this is your example statement numerous studies have shown that self-employed people have poor family relationships or because or okay so to achieve one's dream there is a huge sacrifice involved unless one finds a balance what for the previous paragraph jitan okay so one of the many advantages of starting your own business is that there have been many people uh, you know it paves way uh, to great success uh, a person who is passionate um, always encounters great success or doing a job doing something passionately or pursuing something passionately is a key ingredient to achieve great success is a key ingredient to great success then you write you have written the example statement there have been numerous living examples in our midst um to uh, for example you spoke about zuckerberg i know even i don't like him much but yeah so uh, he was the one that popped into my mind and then you write your uh ending a statement that so i think having your own business is a crucial part or pursuing your passion uh, in having your own business or passionately working on your own business is crucial to uh, great success or great achievement can make one a great achiever can turn one into a great achiever something uh, like that so that's how you write your body paragraph all clear uh okay uh, good thanks okay now uh i think we are already but i'll just quickly go through conclusion now the last thing is conclusion which is also quite crucial because here is where he's um uh, deciding your score what your score is going to be like so your conclusion is always a uh, a um, it's either one or two sentences where you are talking about the uh, whole essay you're giving a summary of the entire essay in short so give me a minute oh, okay so this is your conclusion formula so or your model conclusion should have this should have a one sentence summary of all your ideas okay and all the points should be uh, reworded again or your point of view Uh, where you have supported your uh, running business more than employment is there so it should be having a focused summary of this and then your opinion should be restated so this is how you write your conclusion a model conclusion should consist of a one sentence summary then it should have uh, the summary should have all the points that you have mentioned without repeating your opinion so this can be one or two sentences two sentences is more than enough i'll just share my um essay with you actually it's not mine okay uh, took it from the internet i didn't have time to write today so if this is the one uh, having said that it's undeniable that running a business is risky so this is your uh, concluding statement you say to sum up although there is no doubt there are some risks involved with uh, running your own business i believe the benefits outweigh the drawbacks particularly with regard to making decisions so you reword your uh, summary again and then you state your opinion i believe the benefits outweigh the drawbacks especially uh, with regard to making decisions however it should be said that not everyone is a risk taker and some prefer to work for someone else so you had in your introduction you had agreed to your point of view here as well you're agreeing to your point of view and you had told you it's important to bear in mind that running a company does not suit everybody and in the end you're telling so however it should be that not everyone is a risk taker and some prefer to work for someone else or some prefer the security that uh, an employment brings or some some prefer or some would prefer to have the security that a, a full time job brings or a, a contracted employment brings or something like that okay so your summary or uh, your conclusion should 
summarize all that you have told in one or two sentences and you should reinstate your stance or restate what your stance, your point of view, and then conclude it, that's all. So you can use words like this to sum up in conclusion, having said all, having said all, in view of the arguments outlined above, in view of the arguments um, above, you can always use those. So I'll just write it in chat. You can say to sum up, Uh, in view of the arguments outlined and having said all. So all this or in conclusion to conclude. And you could say, uh, there is no doubt there are some risk, but I would like to restate or I firmly believe that the benefits outweighs the drawbacks. So you write a conclusion in that way. Okay, so that's the end of today's lesson. I know we didn't have time for conclusion, but I hope that uh, formula will help you to write a conclusion properly. So this is a model conclusion. So if you've completed your essay, send one essay to me. I'm still yet to correct Rajesh's work as well, but send one to me. I'll just take a look at it if there's any problem. And uh, I hope you learned something today and that today's class was advantageous to you. If any of your um, friends or anyone wishes to take IELTS or PT lessons, please refer them to us. And yeah, that's all then. See you again. Um, tomorrow you're not there, right, Jitin? I will be there tomorrow. You will be there? Okay. So I'll see you again tomorrow, guys, and have a good day. Good day. Thank you, ma'am.